What's up guys, it's me Jeremy. The Dragon Chainbody, released to RuneScape on September 7th, 2004, was one of the first major upgrades in armor that was added into the game. Only the incredibly rare Dragon Square Shield and the not so useful Dragon Med Helm were released before it. Nowadays, the Dragon Chain Body is a relic of power creep and is really just in this weird situation of being this really rare tier 60 defensive armor with no real use or purpose since it's outclassed by both its level 50 and level 70 tier armor counterparts. However, the Dragon Chain Body has remained at a disproportionately high price in relation to how useful it actually is since it tends to be a pretty rare drop, and I think it will always kind of be this fashionscape item that's a nostalgic relic from the past. However, on release, the Dragon Chain Body was actually a god tier item. It was perhaps the strongest item in the entire game at the time. Picture yourself way back in the day. The year is 2004, the game has finally progressed to the point where there is enough hardcore players to justify the release of new endgame content. And so Jagex finally gets to work, and after many months of development, the first new boss in years and the new strongest monster has finally been released to the game. The update released with a short and simple teaser. There are reports of strange happenings in the desert southwest of Shanty Pass. Animals have been disappearing and a large hole has appeared. Scouts were sent in to investigate, but as of yet, none have returned. Will you fare any better against what lies beneath the sand? Test your mettle if you will, but beware. Whatever crawls in the tunnels below is fierce and more than a match for even the toughest of adventurers. This teaser and release was of course for the Calphite Queen. Hordes of players would scramble together and come together to take on this new boss en masse, with groups of 10, 20, even more players, each so arrogantly equipped with their trusty blue dragon hide and U short bows. And after using most of their food, you would finally take down the vicious beast, only for her to resurrect, regain full health again, and wipe half of your players with her high damage area of effect attacks. And maybe, just maybe, if you were quick on your feet and brought enough players, just maybe you would manage to emerge victorious to have the few remaining survivors reap the spoils. A measly few thousand coins, or perhaps if you were lucky, four water skins to split among your team. Sometimes you might even get nothing as a drop from her. You see, when the Calphite Queen released, its drop title was honestly just terrible, and notably so as it's actually been significantly updated and improved later in both RuneScape 3 and in Old School RuneScape. There was one reason and one reason only to kill the Calphite Queen on release, to try your luck at a chance of the prized possession, the Dragon Chain Body. Upon release, the Dragon Chain Body was the best in slot chest piece item, and it quickly shot up to a massive price of around 40 million GP on average, meaning that it cost about 500 times more than the next best option, the Rune Plate Body, and remained around 20 to 30 million GP for quite some time while it was still best in slot, up until the release of Barrows in 2006, where it eventually began a slow and steady decline in price to being worth around 8 to 10 mil GP. At a strong 30 million or so in value, the Dragon Chain Body was the most expensive and most prized item in the game at the time when it released with the Calphi Queen, as both the Granite Body and Barrows items wouldn't actually be released for almost three years. The Dragon Chain maintained its value from both its rarity and its usability as the best in slot chess piece item. Upgrading from the Rune Plate body at the time, the Dragon Chain provided an increase of 13 points in Slash Defense and a massive 26 points in Crush Defense, and even slight increases in Ranged and Magic Defense. And I guess it also had an increase in Negative Magic Attack as well, but that's not as exciting. To be honest, I didn't actually realize how much better the Dragon Chain was compared to the Rune Plate body until I looked at the actual numbers, and especially when the rest of your armor is already Rune or Adamant, not really doing all that much for you, the difference an extra 13 and 26 points in a defensive stat makes is actually pretty massive. It ends up being an overall 10% or more increase in your defense for those stats. Most monsters in the game attack with Slash, so the upgrade was an extremely useful, just all around piece that you could bring to pretty much just any fight. There was really no situation in the game or any other melee armor in the game was better than the Dragon Chain Body at the time back in 2004. It was a much bigger upgrade as well than the Dragon Medium Helmet compared to the Rune Full Helmet, which only gave an upgrade of about plus 3 in defensive stats, 
As well, the Dragon Square Shield compared to the Rune Kite Shield only provided a measly plus four average upgrade in defensive stats. So actually using the Dragon Chain Body and full Rune with the Rune Kite Shield was literally twice as good as using full Rune with the Rune Plate Body, but then a Dragon Square Shield and a Dragon Med Helm. It was a really serious upgrade at the time, and one of the first significant forms of power creep that RuneScape ever saw. On release, the Dragon Chain Body was arguably the rarest, most expensive, and best item in the entire game. I mean, at the time, special attacks had only just been released to the game months ago. And the most exciting prior content release of the time was the new Priest in Peril and Nature Spirit quests with the opening of Canifis. You have to remember, this was a totally different time. There was no Dagonoth Kings, no God Wars, or crazy high-end bosses to fight, really. You would take your Dragon Chain Body, and you'd go massacre some Greater Demons and Fire Giants, and score some awesome loot. And of course, you would always use it to show off to all of your friends. That's what it was mainly about anyway. I mean, there's a reason this piece of armor is such an iconic piece for Fashionscape, and it's not just because it looks cool. But to be fair, this thing looks pretty damn cool. Over time, the Dragon Chain Body would fade further and further into obscurity as new things released to the game that entirely outclassed the actual viability of the armor piece. The Granite Plate Body had very comparable defensive stats on release and only needed level 50 defense to wear and cost about 500 times less than the Dragon Chain. While Barrow's items were way more common and cheaper, and were stronger in every way, shape, and form, and only required a few more extra defense levels. Unfortunately today, the Dragon Chain Body is only a shell of its former self, but the street cred factor of the item definitely still remains, as it stays alive in our memories and as one of the most iconic fashionscape items in old school RuneScape. So thank you for joining me today on our look back at how OP the Dragon Chain Body used to be. If you have any ideas for what old gems from the past we should maybe take a look at in future videos on this channel, definitely let me know in the comments section below, and leave a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you want. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.